So today I want to do a video on La Serene. I'm going to briefly touch on her husband as well, but this is mostly centered around La Serene. Now, when you understand, when you want to understand La Serene, you have to understand that you have to understand the oceans. Now, La Serene and Agua are personifications of a certain force for the Atlantic Ocean. If you went to the Pacific Ocean or the Indian Ocean, you would have the same force, but in a different form, different spirits. So La Serene and Agua reside over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, now, Agua, if you look him up, he's the ruler, it'll say he's a ruler of fish, the sea, aquatic animals, um, with La Serene. It will say she's the queen of the sea and uh, mysteries, psychic abilities, which is related, the psychic abilities is related to the element of water. Now, um, water is responsible for emotion it's a, and it's a conduit between the physical and the spirit world or astral world, whatever you want to call it. La Serene um, can be seen or associated with dolphins. People, if they have visions of her, may see her with dolphins or dreams of her and may see her with dolphins or shape shift from a dolphin. And this is because dolphins are on the evolutionary path to become higher beings. Um, including human form. So um, dolphins are sentient beings. They have self-awareness. They can problem solve. They can show empathy, seek pleasure, and they have their own language, which I'll touch on again in a minute. Um, but you can see how they're on an evolutionary path to become something higher. Now, sharks, <laughs> for example, are on a different path, I'm not saying it's bad, but they're just on a different path than dolphins. They're the same now that they were 200,000 years ago. Um, you know, all life started in the sea. Science confirms that. Um, we started off as microorganisms and have evolved to fish all the way to humans. But um, for microorganisms, fish, and all forms of life in the sea, La Serene is an ancient spirit and mother goddess to all those beings. Um, like I said earlier, dolphins use their own language. This language is called echolocation. The definition of echolocation is seeing with sound. Dolphins use this to map out their location and to travel and find each other. This is a um, early form of language, pre-human, and is similar to click, langu click languages that you will find in parts of Africa still today. Um, just shows you the deep connection that we have to the sea and our ancestors in the sea. Um, now, Poseidon, to touch on Agwe, Poseidon is a European construct of Agwe um, that came much later. But Poseidon rode, if you read stories about him, Poseidon rode a... Um, a chariot driven by two hippocampus. So hippocampus um, in Greek mythology was a being that was like the head of a horse and the legs of, not even legs, the body of a fish. The bottom part was like a fish. Now, uh, in medical terminology, the uh, hippocampus is also a medical term, and it's a major component of the brain. Humans and other mammals have it, and they call it a hippocampus because it's shaped like a seahorse. Again, just shows you our connection to the sea, to our ancestors in the sea. The hippocampus um, in the brain is responsible for consolidation of short-term and long-term memory. Um, humans and other animals have two, one on each side of their brain, and fish have one also, but it's obviously much smaller and less evolved than humans. Now, fish use this hippocampus in their brain to map out their environment, and um, this is called cognitive mapping. Cognitive meaning aware, understanding, knowledge, and mapping, obviously, their environment. Fish know this is point A, this is point B, this is point C. I go to point B, I know how to get back to point C. Um, so hence why Poseidon rode the hippocampus or, you know, used the hippocampus to drive his chariot because they ha the hippocampus had their environment mapped out and because um, 
the oceans are so massive, you would need a being like that. Um, I also wanted to touch on the connection between, um, so between La Serena and Agua and their offerings. Um, when you read on La Serena and Agua, you will see um, a lot of posts will say that they take offerings from the land, land animals like sheep, um, chickens, that kind of thing. And the reason for this is because um, they're obviously gods, La Serena and Agua, but they take animals from the land to feed the part of themselves related to human beings. And it keeps their connection with human beings strong because they're in the sea, you know. It's a different energy, you know. So it keeps that connection with humans strong. And that also gives them dual power over the land and the sea. Um, La Serena is a symbol of power, of the, of the sea, and this gives her even more jurisdiction over the sea with her union to Agua over the Atlantic Ocean. Now, Agua is also associated with Ursula Frida. If you look in a lot of writing too, it will say, you know, uh, um, Agua is married to La Serene, he's married to um, Ursula Frida as well. In Greek mythology and other myths, um, not just Greek mythology, other myths, you will always hear about polygamy, multiple marriages, multiple babies, and things of that um, energy because um, it gives you power basically in both realms. So Agua and La Serene so Union gives them power over the Atlantic Ocean. Agua and Ursula Frida give them dual power over the land. So um, all alliances um, are based on marriage and babies and unions on a lunar level. So that is all for now, and I will be back soon.